I would say it's all downhill from there. But, man, it is not. No, Thursday not, not night, we are going to get kicked off. This video is dropping Wednesday evening. You got one day, and then after that, you're going to have Ohio State at Minnesota. Ohio State is minus 14. That total is 64. Substantially bigger number. Oh, yeah. We're looking at a way different kind of ball game, Samuel. What do we got? I mean, we got one of the best teams in the country traveling to Minnesota. Um <laughs> Ohio State is just, they're loaded. Yes, CJ Stroud is going to be making his first ever collegiate pass in this game. Uh, but he's going to be throwing to Chris Olave and Garrett Wilson, two of the best wide receivers playing today. Um, Master Teague, Travion Henderson are going to be able to run the ball. Last year, Minnesota's defense gave up 6.9 yards per play and 6.3 yards per rush. That rushing, that defensive rushing stat, they were 124th in the country in uh, rush per play uh, given up. And last year, Ohio State got 5.9 ru- yards per rush for number three in the country. I mean, they Ohio State was able to run the ball last year. Yeah, Trey Sermon's gone, but Trey Sermon wasn't necessarily, you know, the Big Ten championship game aside, you know, I'm still having nightmares of Trey Sermon running through my Wildcat <laughs> defense. But, uh, you know, Master T was the number one guy last year. Travion Henderson's going to come in. They're going to be able to run the ball. Minnesota's defense struggles against the run. On, on the flip side, and we mentioned this a little bit on Monday, Minnesota's strength is running the ball. Their offensive line is fantastic. Mohamed Ibrahim is the returning Big Ten running back of the year. But that's not the weakness of the Ohio State defense. Ohio State has trouble against the pass. Their secondary got burned a lot last year. They don't generate a ton of sacks. But Tanner Morgan is going to need to be able to sit back and throw the ball down the field. I just don't know who he's going to be throwing to. You know, Rashad Bateman is not there anymore. Uh, I like Their wide receivers don't instill fear in the hearts of men. They're a running team. Minnesota is a running team. And I don't know that they're going to be able to do that against Ohio State. All right. So I, I, think, I think I trust... Um... Minnesota to figure out the passing game a because I think Fleck is a good coach and I think Fleck is able to capitalize on another team's weaknesses I don't um, know who I, these receivers I think, are I think we be. disagree on, on Fleck being a good coach but that's, that's well another. we probably do then we probably do I I think Fleck is actually a pretty good coach I I, I you know I, you know is he the greatest I think he's coach a great leader he's a great inspirator like people love playing for him I just don't know how good of an actual on the field coach he is I don't know. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. Here's 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 my thought process. Ohio State's one of the best teams in the country. Yeah. I don't think Ohio State's going to be in threat of losing this game. At my normal instinct is to say Ohio State's going to cover this number. They're going to cover it easily. My fear is this has backdoor written all over it. This has Ohio State being up three scores, you know, 20, 25 points, something like that, 21 points. And, and giving up two garbage-time touchdowns for a desperate team trying to make some noise in their home stadium at their opener of a new season to get this thing to be a 10-point game or something of that nature, and, and you, bust your, you bust your total. Or not you bust your total, you bust your spread. Um, that's my scare. That's my fear. You put a gun to my head and you tell me i got to make a pick because I hate this game and I hate this number completely. <laughs> I think I would take the home team with the points. Really? Oh, I wow. I don't, I, I'm, I'm warning you now. That is just a weird feeling in the pit of my gut that I just feel like everybody in the world is going to be so jacked up to lay a boatload of money on Ohio State. And, and, and they have already. Weird, and they have, and they have already. And by the time we get closer to Thursday, it's going to get bigger. We're going to get closer to Thursday, and something fishy is going to happen in the fourth quarter. That's that's all I got. That's all I got. I think Tanner Morgan is a good enough quarterback to where if he hits somebody on a broken route wide open, these these DBs are not above making a mistake to 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 let somebody free and, and, and yeah, miss a no, coverage. Right. Yeah. And that's and that's seven. And then you get desperate and you do the same thing again. And then it's and then you I don't think they're a threat to win the game, but at the end of the day, you you done got caught holding a bad ticket. That being said, 
I don't know how Minnesota is going to be stopping Ohio State. Yeah, they, they might give something up. I just don't see how they're going to stop. That might them. be true. You know, that, might that be offense true. is a fully armed and operational battle station. Yes, it's a new quarterback. That you know, there's no question about that. But like, you or I could get on the field behind Ohio State's offensive line and throw to Olave and Wilson, and Whew, that's put a, up a lot that's of a points. Tech stretch, but maybe, yeah. He, here's here's my question. Sixty four is a big number. How how many points does Minnesota? Because we don't think Ohio State's going to have problems scoring. I no. agree on that. How many points does Minnesota need to score for us to bust 64? Um, they're going to need to get in the 20s. Okay, so because you think Ohio State's getting into the 40s, right? I, I, Yeah, I do. Okay, 10 points a quarter, that's not unheard of in today's college football from a dominating offensive mm-hmm. uh, juggernaut like Ohio State's the, been the last couple of years. The only, the only thing that might like trip that. me up is if they are able, if Minnesota is able to establish the run, if they are able to kind of run, drain the clock, if they can keep it away from Ohio State's offense, which is a possibility. Like I say, their running game is really, really good, but that is the strength of Ohio State's defense. So, you know, if Minnesota can get the ball going, then I could see it going under because if Minnesota can shorten the game, that that is not only their their path to winning, but that is easily the path to uh, to getting to hitting the under. Well, now hang on, I want to I want to take what you just said right there, okay. and and I want to expand on that a little bit. That might be Ohio State's best option as well. If they feel like they're up by three scores, they sit on this lead because they got a big boy team coming into Columbus next weekend. And and is this a thing where we sandbag a little bit and we and we hold a bunch of plays back? Why break open the whole playbook against a team we're kind of dominating and bullying? Because it's a Let's, conference game. Yeah, but if you're winning the game, beating them by thirty or beating them by you know by ten doesn't change anything. But at at that point, I think when you're gonna if you're gonna pull the dogs off, if you're gonna rein it in, it's gonna be in the third or fourth quarter, and you've probably shown what you're worried about not showing. If you're Ohio State, your number one concern. I think has to be getting to the Big Ten championship. If oh, you, we I, we disagree there. We okay. disagree there. While while that's true, if they get to the Big Ten championship and the Big Ten has cannibalized itself, everybody has three losses but Ohio State, and Ohio State is sitting as a one loss team, and that is an ugly loss to Oregon in Columbus. That could be the difference between them not getting invited to a table of four and them getting invited to a table of four. We shall see. I mean. Uh, that, because there, I would say this, a, a one-loss Georgia team, a one-loss Georgia team, or a one-loss Alabama team is getting in over a one-loss Ohio State team. I, I, I will guarantee you that today, right here, one loss. So they lose to Oregon. That's the difference between they better hope Georgia or Alabama loses two games. They better hope it. Yeah, maybe. maybe. So, so I, I will, I will take Ohio or, or Minnesota in the points in this one. Scares I, me a little bit. I'd I'm, lean I'm on a the, little towards the over. I'm on the Buckeyes. Yeah. That's the smart place to be. I mean, it's rare. It's just hard to step in front of these freight trains. I'm not afraid of doing it. Well, I shouldn't say that. I do it all the time. But mainly because I just don't care enough about winning to bet on a team that I hate. It makes me sick, I'm to, my, honest. It makes me sick to my stomach to, to I'm, say that. I'm honest because, with the fans about it. You know. Let, 